Andy Wallace has done more than anyone to define the sound of modern rock and metal. He shaped the sound of many hugely influential bands including Nirvana, Jeff Buckley, Linkin Park, System of a Down, Foo Fighters and so many more. After graduating from university with a degree in chemical engineering in 1974, Andy put that to one side and opened his own studio named Hit City West. Based in Los Angeles, the studio saw some success keeping busy with clients such as Motley Crue, who recorded their first album there in 1981. It was at this time that Andy moved back to his native East Coast roots and carried on his work in New York. Initially, he spent his time doing club remixes, which eventually led to a meeting with Rick Rubin, which proved to be a highly pivotal moment in his career. This meeting led him to mix three albums for Slayer with Rick as producer. These albums became a watershed in the metal genre, but his main commercial success with Rick was Run DMC's Walk This Way, which was a worldwide smash, and the original rap rock crossover. In 1991, Andy was asked to mix Geffen's new sign-in, a band going by the name of Nirvana. Producer Butch Vig had initially mixed the album, but he and the group thought it would be good to try again with another mixer to see if it could be improved. Geffen wanted to hire Scott Litt, who was big at the time after mixing R.E.M., but Kurt preferred Andy after hearing the Slayer album Seasons in the Abyss, which he thought sounded really heavy. According to Wallace and Vig, the band loved the results. However, Cobain since said otherwise, saying it was too polished. I think there might be a bit of hindsight going on there, and maybe Kurt, who really didn't want to be that big and famous, blaming how well the album was mixed for its consequence. It's interesting to note that contrary to popular belief, Andy didn't use samples on the drums directly, but rather to trigger reverbs, so that he had more control on the decay and tone of the reverb returns. I think you can hear it when soloing the snare from Smells Like Teen Spirit. The mix was done at Scream Studios on an SSL G-Series console, and interestingly, very little else. One of Andy's traits is that he doesn't tend to use much in the way of outboard, Instead, using the channel strips for the EQ, compression and gate to shape his sound. He does like to use the LA-2A for vocals from time to time, but very judiciously. He's much more of a fan of automation for gain control. This simplified approach explains a lot in terms of how his records sound. Take for example the first Rage Against the Machine album. It has power and dynamics, sounds amazingly well balanced, with each element having punch and clarity. The only real effects he uses are layered reverbs one short one for ambience, like the tiled room on the Lexicon PCM70, then a medium haul and long haul. He then blends these to get the right character. He also has delays, again one for ambience, with a delay time of around 300 milliseconds, and then further tempo delays for rhythmic parts if required. He's also partial to using the Eventide harmonizer for doubling effects. Like any great engineer, Andy likes to see the mix as a whole, and not carving out frequency bands, but rather having the frequencies of different instruments work together. For instance, the low end of a snare or guitar working together with the bass and kick drum so in this instance, not just high pass in a non-bass focused instrument, and when approaching the high end, not just low pass in bass instruments, but instead keeping clarity where needed, like for instance the slap of a kick drum at 5k. Of course he will tend to reduce unwanted frequencies wherever possible if needed, like the ultra low end of a guitar or vocal, or the muddy parts of a drum recording. Another great tip from Andy is to get a mix going quickly, getting the first draft up in around 30 minutes. I've always felt this is great advice, I like to employ the 15 minute mix strategy. This is basically a technique that makes you focus on the crucial stuff first and fix any problems. These can include phase alignment on the drums, but most crucially a balance of the parts whereby you understand the song and have everything working together. From there, you can do all the fine tuning and all the detailed work. By the mid 90s, Andy's profile had been raised quite a bit, which afforded him opportunities to work with the best up and coming artists of the day. One of which was Jeff Buckley. 
the extraordinarily talented singer-songwriter with an incredible unique voice. Andy was not just the mix engineer on his debut album Grace, but also the producer. This was a huge success and again showed Andy's ability to showcase a talent in a fairly raw, uncomplicated way, letting the emotions and performances pervade the mix with careful dynamic automation rather than heavy compression with an iron being loud for the jukebox or radio. As the 90s progressed, Andy was asked to work on albums by a whole host of bands including Limp Bizkit and Linkin Park, mixing their debut album Hybrid Theory. Albums like this define a genre at the time which was alternative rock rap. This edgy but commercially successful genre dominated the airwaves with its in-your-face approach and Andy's mixing ideologies were perfect for framing the power of this new music. As taste changed going into the 2000s, music got louder due to the loudness wars. This meant that mixers were more heavily limited by the mastering engineers in order to compete with everything else that was out. This one-upmanship meant that a mixing engineer like Andy would hear his mixers much more squashed on the release than he intended. This led him to make sure he oversaw some of the process himself by using a fair amount of mix bus compression at around 4 decibel gain reduction, but making sure he still had a good dynamic mix that he was happy with. Since then, Andy Wallace has continued to produce and mix records for the likes of Coldplay, Guns N' Roses, Biffy Claro, System of a Down, and loads more in between. Just for the classic albums he's worked on alone, is sure to be remembered. I hope his tasteful yet straightforward approach to mixing will also continue to be a lesson for all of us. But less is, in fact, sometimes more. Thank you.